What's happening, YouTube? This is your girl, Megan. Welcome back to the Hood Astro Queen for all of my returning subscribers. But if this is your first time on my page today, I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button, baby. Stop what you're doing. Do it now. Now. Because you know you want to. Also, don't be scared to click that notification bell, y'all, because it will update you whenever I make a new post. And we're on our way to a thousand subscribers. So, I mean, once we do that, I will be doing a giveaway just to show my appreciation for all of my family. Really, I consider you guys family. Uh, and I am just honored and humbled at the fact that you guys enjoy my content. So, yeah, that giveaway is on deck. So let's go ahead and hit 1K so we can get it popping. You feel me? Now, without further ado... First of all, happy Monday, happy Monday, happy, happy Monday. I hope you guys have a, a prosperous, successful, productive week. Be sure to take care of your, and I usually say this at the end of my videos, but make sure you're taking care of yourself and practicing unconditional self-love guys, because it's hard out here. People are literally losing their lives, losing their minds. So I hope that this video finds you in great health. And this is just a quick reminder for you guys to really tend to your own needs. You know what I'm saying? But moving that aside, I wanted to do a birth chart reading for my girlfriend, my baby mama, Kiki Palmer. You feel me? My homegirl, Ben suggested this video um, a long time ago, but I was just like, I, I just never got around to doing it. I kind of got lost in the sauce, like Gucci Mane a little bit. But now, like, I saw a picture of Kiki fine ass on my timeline, y'all, on social media, and I was just like, shit, like, I gotta do this. And so, let's go ahead and get started. So, Kiki Palmer was born, Lauren Kiana Palmer, I didn't know that, on August 26, 1933, did I say 1930? Yeah, 1933, wait, no, 1993, damn, I'm tripping. <laughs> she be like what 90 or some shit but anyway um yes 1993 at 3 a.m in harvey illinois i don't even know where that is um so if you guys do drop down in the comment section below and bring me up to speed baby because i have never heard of that before now she is a virgo sun sagittarius moon which actually explains a lot the number three carries a lot of Sagittarian energy with it because it's associated with a lot of those Jupiter-like qualities, like being charismatic and outgoing and, you know, just all of that good shit. And somebody who's very witty, too. And with her being a Sag moon, this actually kind of just doubles or compounds on that Sagittarian energy to the point where... Kiki probably acts more like a Sagittarius than she does a Virgo. You know what I mean? And then also that Sagittarian influence, especially with her moon at the 26th degree of Sagittarius, could point towards her uh, religious upbringing. Because I was looking at her Wikipedia bio and they were saying that she got her start in the church. Like she used to act in the church and do little talent shows and her family are like devout Christians. So that definitely deals with that Sagittarian energy. And then 26 breaks down to the number eight, which like I always say is very strongly correlated with Capricorn energy. So this points towards like hard work, discipline, self-control, even like status seeking uh, kind of behavior. Or this could actually point towards Kiki's mom exuding a lot of those qualities also, given that it's her moon that's at the 26th degree and the moon does deal with the mother. And if I'm not mistaken, I think her mom is her manager, either now or she was at some point. And also, y'all help me out. I tried to look this up, but I couldn't really find anything on it. I'm not really sure if her dad was her manager at some point or if her dad, because I know her parents are very closely uh connected to her career like they they were a lot of the driving force behind her career and her chart actually reflects that and we're gonna get into that a little bit later but y'all let me know what's the tea with that like with her dad and her mom like are they both her managers now or did they used to be or what's the tea but yeah so that explains her son moon placements her son is actually conjoined to her mercury as well as her Juno, her asteroid Juno. Now, 
Mercury, uh, Virgo people are hella, 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 hella intelligent because Virgo does very well in Mercury. Mercury actually rules Virgo and Gemini. So, I mean, these people are like smart as a whip, hella good memory, um, which could definitely be beneficial in her acting career, right? Because you have to memorize lines and all that shit. So, yeah, this could absolutely produce somebody who's highly intelligent. And she's always kind of struck me as a very intelligent uh, woman also. Now, something else that um, stands out to me as far as her uh, planetary placements are concerned is the fact that her Mars is conjoined to her Jupiter in the sign of Libra. Now, this could point towards her career in the arts because Libra is also known as another sign of like um, the entertainment industry. It can represent music, artistry, just because it's ruled by Venus. So that Venus influence creates somebody who is very either highly influenced by that type of artistic ability or somebody who could potentially go into a career that's art related. So um, of course, acting, modeling, singing, and I think she's a pretty good dancer too. So all of the things um, that she's involved in career wise can be, uh, I guess you trace back to this Mar, her Mars conjoined to Jupiter and Libra. Now, as far as aspects are concerned, her Mars and Jupiter are squaring uh, her Uranus. And her Uranus is at the 18th degree of Capricorn. Now, this points towards Kiki being um, bisexual, actually, because that Libra energy sexuality wise goes both ways and then uranus represents um perversions it can represent homosexuality or just kind of other alternative kind of um styles of like sexuality or whatever you want to call it so yeah this could point towards her being bisexual which i don't know if she ever admitted publicly but just for my sake i'm gonna keep my fingers crossed because that's bad that's wifey right there <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's that, but then it can also represent her being a very, um, free spirited kind of person and a, a independent thinker in her own right. And this can be a reinforced because her, um, ascendant is squaring Uranus as well. So this creates somebody who can kind of like, I don't want to say stir trouble up, but people who can be very off putting to the public, whether it be towards their like views they have views that a lot of people might deem to be unpopular or these people might dress especially with this ascendant might uh dress very you know like make people look like mm, why she got that on you know like and a lot of times especially people who have very he heavy uranus energy in their chart they can be the type of people to take pride in actually looking different being different than a lot of people almost to the point where they become like willfully kind of um rebellious so like you know if the whole crowd is going right I'm the type of nigga to go left and I'm gonna go left just because I can you know if everybody is wearing Givenchy and Gucci and Prada bitch I'm gonna stroll up to the function in these Kmart sandals bitch what's happening like you know what I'm saying and like yeah I'm different yes I'm bold talk about it and for as long as I can remember Kiki has pretty much always been an individualist when it comes to how she looks and people have clowned her for it. You know, she'll wear something and people will be like, why does she have that on? And I ain't gonna lie, me, myself initially, um, cause my thing wasn't really that she dressed, you know, that, that she had her own individual unique style of dressing. I'm all, I'm here for being yourself showing your individuality it was just kind of like it just wasn't right it, it felt to me like rihanna but not quite like you know she was going for that rihanna like i'm a daring fashionista vibe but she just always kind of fell short of it but i mean that's her style that's her personal you know her taste her swag and she's kind of grown into herself and honestly that's all that matters but something else that i see in her chart that is alarming because as I said initially she does have a lot of themes that point towards her being like controlled somebody being forced into the entertainment industry which is honestly not uncommon given that she's a child star a former child star rather and a lot of 
child stars slash former child stars do have like this kind of push and pull kind of relationship, even sometimes a tumultuous relationship with their parents. And also I read that both of her parents are former actors themselves. So they actually met in an acting class and just, I guess they decided to hang up their dreams. And then once Kiki came around, um, whether it be, she kind of took a liking towards the arts herself, they, you know, I guess took the opportunity to really get behind her and in a way kind of vicariously live their dreams through her. And something that uh, represents this in her chart or because, I mean, this is really not my opinion. I'm literally just reading what I see in her chart um, that's kind of disturbing is that her Chiron and your Chiron is your wounded healer. Um, It's the asteroid that represents kind of like a a area of life where you've experienced a lot of trauma, a lot of um, a lot of psychological pain. And it you can either grow to kind of like try to overcompensate for that all your life or you can kind of master it and be a pillar of um, support for other people who are kind of going through something similar. And her Chiron is at the 28th degree of Leo. One degree off from the anoretic degree, which automatically brings crisis, uh, trauma, a lot of uh, third party interference. And then that Leo deals with um, it deals people who have their Chiron in Leo because it is a generational thing. Like if you're born between a certain period, a lot of people share the same Chiron placements, but it's the house that is placed in that matters. I'm not too confident about this, her being born at 3 a.m. I don't know how accurate it is, but just for the sake of this reading, uh, because it's, I mean, it it could check out because her being a cancer ascendant will place her um, Chiron in the second house of Leo. And that second house usually deals with, I mean, of course, it's associated with money, resources, values, things of that nature, but it's also very, it has a very strong undercurrent of family, like family traditions, family values, uh, generational curses, you know, certain things that are kind of running rampant through the family lineage, lineage, so to speak, can be found here. And her Chiron in the second house of Leo could absolutely point towards somebody, especially with Leo representing the entertainment industry, could point towards somebody who's family uh kind of drove them towards the entertainment industry somebody who's kind of been like I don't want to say a a money a cash cow I guess you could say for their family somebody who because there there's this kind of especially Kyra in the second house there's this um this relationship and it could be almost like unhealthy or dysfunctional between money uh, value your self worth. So you could come from a very poor family. And as a result, even when you do become more successful and if you do make more money in life, there's this theme of like, uh, financial stability that's going to be there. These people tend to struggle with their, uh, relationship and the, the importance and value that they put on money. And these people can also, like I said, have family who are very, uh, you know, concerned with the money or family who kind of push them or help shape their perspective on, you know, their money or on their career, you know, and in Kiki's case, how they navigate in the entertainment industry. But then furthermore, you know, when you take a look at the aspects that her Chiron is making, her Chiron is conjoined to her son and your son uh, in your chart could represent your father. So once again, hence me asking what the deal was as far as her parents, uh, her father managing her, because this could point towards a father who is very influential or just even downright controlling of your entertainment career. And of course, we can interpret this Leo influence, especially as it pertains to uh, it aspecting her son as well as her Saturn, 
to her parents being actors themselves, right? Her parents being of the arts, interested in the arts themselves. But there is this element of tension of, like I said, almost just downright stage parents, like who drive their children into the the entertainment industry for their own purposes. You know what I'm saying? You can see that with this aspect. And then furthermore, with her Saturn opposing Chiron, which Saturn represents the more dominant parent. I mean, it could be the mother, it could be the father. Um, typically, traditionally, I, I guess a lot of people associate it with the father, but um, once again, uh, reinforces this theme of being controlled by an older parent and primarily controlled by way of their career, you know? And I think a lot of this looking back at just the evolution of Kiki Palmer is her, you know, once she actually reached that age where she was just like, she wasn't little Aquila and the B, she was like a grown ass woman. It was almost like she, you know, like she broke out of her shell and she had this, and a lot of child stars struggle to find their own identity when they detach from their parents. But um, you could kind of see that in her career and how she kind of fluctuated as far as her identity went and her really just trying to find herself and who she felt she was as a woman. And this theme of control is compounded by the fact that her Pluto, which is the planet of domination, it's the planet of control. It could even in a lot of negative cases represent abuse. So you can find patterns of abuse in your chart based off of your, uh, where your Pluto is located and how it's aspected. But Her Pluto is in the 22nd degree of Scorpio and that 22 deals with like the ideal of like being controlled. Either you're controlling somebody else or somebody else is controlling you. Okay. And her Chiron is actually squaring her Pluto. Okay. And it, I mean, it literally reinforces this theme of her being controlled within the entertainment industry. Her ideas not, or or her actions not really being her own, right? Um, and this could even just be downright because her Venus is trining her Pluto also. And her Venus is conjoined to her ascendant in Cancer and it's at the 28th degree. Once again, one degree off from the anoretic degree, which deals with third-party interference. So this could be her at some point in her life feeling like she had no control over her career, no control over her image, the way that she looked. And that cancer element, it deals with family, right? So her having her Venus so close to that anoretic degree deals with, it reinforces this theme of her uh, going through a lot of issues, uh, power dynamics, power struggles within her family, having a very intrusive family, very um, just like parents who don't really know boundaries, right? And you can wow she got it bad y'all she got it bad I kind of feel sorry for her and I mean if you just just putting her chart aside if we're just looking at this from a sheer psychological standpoint it would make sense because a lot of child stars go through situations to where they're struggling to find their identity and just on a just a human level it would cause somebody to kind of act out and granted thank god she hasn't been one of those former child stars who's kind of like completely lost their minds but um her chart a lot of her aspects in her chart reinforce her undergoing a lot of um transformation as far as her identity and her establishing boundaries with her family and taking control and ownership over her own image and career because her parents especially just judging her chart had a lot of influence on her growing up like a lot like it's kind of it's not healthy. Now her Venus is conjoined to her ascendant uh, in, in the sign of cancer, which reinforces her beauty. Cause anytime you have Venus on your ascendant, these people are beautiful people, but on a more, I guess, negative side, they do have a tendency to not really um, recognize their own beauty. So some of these people can have They could be the most beautiful person in the room, but probably not feel like it. Something else I found to be quite interesting was the fact that her black moon Lilith is in the sign of Aries, which 
naturally opposes her Mars, which is in the sign of Libra, right? And with these being in two polar opposite signs, this could point towards somebody who encounters a lot of power struggles within their relationships. And with her uh, midheaven actually being conjoined to her black moon Lilith, this reinforces this theme of like this power struggle, this power dynamic between a parent and a child, the more dominant parent and the child. Okay. And a parent who directly is involved, like who has a direct, you know, like their hands involved in their child's career, which would make sense if she was being managed by either one or both of her parents at some point. And then also this aspect can even produce somebody who grows to resent a parent based off of just uh, controlling behavior because her Mars is opposing her Black Moon Lilith. Um, her Jupiter is opposing her Black Moon Lilith. Her North Node, she's a Sagittarius North Node, is opposing her uh, Black Moon Lilith. So not only does this indicate that she could have some type of resentment um, against a particular parent, but she could even grow to be very rebellious because this is like a fight for her freedom. That Sagittarius North Node represents freedom. People who are free to live their truth, to be who they want to be. Um, and who, people who can even, especially with her uh, midheaven conjoined to Black Moon Lilith, could create somebody who kind of like goes out of their way to seek to surround themselves with people who are the opposite, the complete opposite of their parents. So I found that to be quite interesting. Yeah. And then with her uh, Pluto forming a trine to her ascendant, once again, like I said, reinforces her being controlled and that uh, Pluto, because our Pluto is in Scorpio, it could bring about somebody who reaches a lot of fame, power, affluence. And like I said, just kind of reinforces this, this theme of her being controlled or her being controlled by just something, somebody outside of herself. But then it can also, on the flip side, represent her going through lots of transformations um, as far as in regards to her, her identity, her learning how to kind of take back some of that control. So this could also represent her kind of evolving into her own person. And before I close this video out, I wanted to discuss her lunar nodal placements. So she's a Sagittarius North Node, which makes her a Gemini South Node. And I often say that Gemini South Nodes, just because Gemini is the sign of duplicity, could be people who are like, I, don't, I mean, on the worst, at its very worst, it could be people who live double lives, like two different lives. But then it, it could also be people who are kind of um, trapped by a desire to kind of compartment compartmentalize I guess you could say everything to the point where it's almost as if like they could uh present information this way to this person information that way to that person or even as it pertains to their identities be one way with this person another way with that person or there's some type of uh, dissonance or disconnection that's happening to the point where they don't feel comfortable with like I said, living in their truth because that North Node Sagittarius represents freedom. Also, that number seven deals with somebody who is very charming, refined. And this points towards Kiki actually being very wise, her having a karmic responsibility to even serve as a, um, I don't want to say a philosopher, but I mean a mentor to other people because she's just naturally she has this this wisdom about herself. And this could actually point towards Kiki being very spiritual, you know, very in tune with like the outer realm, outside realms, just effortlessly because it's just it's the path that she's destined to take. That's kind of what she was put here to do, to kind of integrate a, a lot of information, integrate a lot of her, you know, different parts of her personality and find her freedom, find her truth and be who she is walking her talk. And this is reinforced with her North Node forming a trine to her Black Moon Lilith. And then also her, uh, her uh, North Node trining her Midheaven too. So, this could be, like I said before, her establishing that sense of freedom 
in her career, you know? So, yeah, especially with her Black Moon Lilith being in Aries. Like I said, there's this element, this this power struggle thing that she seems to have in her chart. Um, but also, I mean, for what is worth, Black Moon Lilith, Aries people also tend to be very, very sexual. So in some way, these people struggle with their sexuality and how they're able to integrate their sexuality into who they are as a person, which also is kind of fitting because, you know, she ain't little Akilah in the B no more. Kiki Palmer is very much a grown ass woman. Um, and so there's this um, push and pull kind of effect that's taking place between her, you know, um, expressing that, right? And her allowing herself to kind of jump out the window and be this, you know, um, embrace all parts of her being, even if it's kind of, it contradicts her wholesome Medea's family reunion type of prepackaged image that she kind of grew up with. And if, once again, it also kind of seems like it, it would make sense, especially if your image and your career was controlled by your parents initially, you know, there's going to be this fork in the road that you're going to reach eventually to where it's like, do I value my needs and what I feel for myself and who I think I am as a person versus like my parents and what the fuck they want? Cause a lot of times it's going to be two different things, you know? And really, really quick before I end this video, because if you made it to this point, you might as well stick around. Thank you so much for watching my video in its entirety, but really quick. Cause I think some more people need to hear this and I'm going to say this again at the beginning of another video, but while it's on my mind, a lot of people hop in, well, a few people hop in my comment section after every reading to either tell me how they disagree with my reading or to tell me how, like, in some way I'm giving my opinion. Well, here's the tip, okay? Bitch, I don't give a fuck about what you disagree with because I'm not too much understanding how you're disagreeing with something that's literally not an opinion. I think I do a good job because I do give opinions on videos now, but I think I do a pretty good job at dis clearly distincting where my opinion like begins and ends and then the reading actually begins because I literally just read what's in their chart. So this isn't Megan coming up with some narrative or trying to make a narrative fit that ain't supposed to be there or me, uh, you know, coming up with my readings based off of looking at the blogs. Bitch, I'm looking at their birth chart. And if it just translates into a certain energy signature, then I'm just going to call it how I see it. Now, if you want to have an educated discussion on, well, you know what, Megan, you said this aspect and this aspect produces this. Well, you know, I think, you know, do you think it could be possible that, you know, there could be another interpretation of that? Or, you know, this is kind of what I found by studying it myself. That's a completely different conversation. All right. And if that's not the conversation that you're trying to have. Just because I said something that you don't like about your fave, bitch, get the fuck out my comments, bitch, because I will block you like in a, in a quickness. And at first I would sit and go back and forth and argue and participate in a lot of lower vibrational behavior. But because I am trying to elevate to another level, my block game is strong. So I'm finna throw a block party, bitch. And if you want to be invited, just let me know. Okay. So yeah, God bless y'all. Make sure you practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And until next time, I'll holla.